Black Friday, how to set up and play. First thing you'll do is lay out the game board, put the silver markers here on the 20 spot and here on the zero, and you'll put each of the five stock markers starting on space seven. Set out your supply of money. I'm using poker chips instead of the paper money that came with the game. Also set out your subsidy tiles. These tiles represent one subsidy, these represent two, and these represent five subsidies. These are gonna be used during the game to get money for the players. Next, create your supply of silver and gold bars. One gold bar represents five silver bars. At the end of the game, the winner is gonna be the player that has amassed the most silver and gold. Next, put black briefcases, nine of them, here below the Wall Street Journal table, and then set out your level cards. These level tiles go in order, starting with the start tile, and then it goes to level one, and then level two, in ascending order. These will represent, during the phase of the game, the maximum number of subsidies a player can have, the maximum number of shares a player can buy or sell, the maximum number of silver they can buy on their turn, and the number of total briefcases that get drawn from the bag during a price adjustment. Next, you'll put all the briefcases onto the three sales tables along with the indicated number of black suitcases, one, two, and three, respectively, and then you'll put four of each color here into the market. If you're only playing with two players, you're only going to put two of each color. Next, you'll put the remaining briefcases in the bag. For each color, you're going to put 10 plus the number of players. So since I'm setting this up for a four player game, I'm going to put 14 of each color into the bag. The ones not used can be returned to the game box. Each player is going to randomly draw five briefcases and put them behind their player screen. Once all players have drawn their five briefcases, then you're going to draw 20 random out of the bag and add them to the market. Finally, randomly select a start player. You're going to play in clockwise order. Each player after the start player is going to get one of these special action tiles. I'm playing for four players, so I'm not going to use that one. These are special powers that can be used once during the game by the player. Before we start, if this was a two-player game, you would also give these extra special action powers to player one and player two. They would both get two of these extra ones. Player two would also get the one that is normally given to the second player. Also, only in a two-player game, as part of setup, each of the two players will select one share from the market and add it to the purchase table. On a player's turn, they have the option of buying shares, selling shares, buying silver, or passing. Additionally, they can take subsidies and they can also use their special action once per game. When taking subsidies, you can always have a total number of subsidies equal to the amount printed on the level tile. So since we're at the start of the game, each player can only have a maximum of two subsidies. Whenever you take a subsidy, it's going to give you $20 from the bank. Subsidies are never paid back. You're just going to have to pay interest on them during a price adjustment. So for example, on this player's turn, let's say they decide to take out two subsidies up to the maximum that they can have. For each of those subsidies they took out, they got 20 for a total of 40. So let's cover buying shares first. You can always buy a maximum based on the level of the game. So at the start, you can only buy one share unless you decide to use your once per game special power. When you buy shares, you always pay the current market price based on the stock value, and you simply take those shares from the market. So let's say this player decides to buy a red share. They would pay $7 to the bank, add this behind their player screen. The final thing you do as part of buying shares is you have to move just one briefcase from the market to the purchase table. The color has to match 
one of the bot shares. So since the, this player bought a red share, they'll move a red briefcase to the purchase table. If they brought for a say later in the game, they bought a red and a green, they can choose which briefcase they move. If they bought a briefcase and there were no more in the color or colors that they bought to move over, then it's their choice which color they can move over to the purchase table. Let's say this was a subsequent turn now after a couple rounds and another player wanted to buy a red share. They pay the market price, they would take this behind their screen, and then, as we know, they have to move a briefcase over to the purchase table. Whenever the last briefcase of a color is removed from the market, you always slide that stock marker one space to the right. Also, whenever the third briefcase of a color is added to a purchase table, either the stock purchase table or the silver purchase table, again, you move that stock value to the right. So in this example, both things happened. The last was removed, so it moved to the right, and the third of a color was placed on a purchase table, so again, it moved to the right. When moving the stock marker token, if a stock is ever forced to move right and it's unable to, you can see the arrows indicate it slides up to the next spot. Vice versa, if it's on the left side of the table and it's forced to move left and it can't, you can see it gets slid down. At the end of a player's buy action, you always check to see if a price adjustment was triggered when the fifth briefcase gets placed here, that would trigger the price adjustment, which we'll cover later. If this is a five player game, it takes a sixth briefcase to trigger the price adjustment after a buy action. Next, let's cover the sell shares action. A player on their turn can decide to sell shares. Just like buying shares, you can only sell up to the maximum. So at the start of the game, it's one, but you can see later in the game, if we were in phase four, they could sell up to three shares. The player will simply take the shares that they're selling, they're going to place them back into the market, and they're going to take money from the bank equal to the current stock price. Whenever you sell shares, you have to slide one stock marker back. It has to match one of the colors you sold, but you only have to slide one marker back. So let's say a player sells orange and blue. It's their choice which of these price markers they're going to move one space left. When selling shares, you also have to take one briefcase off of the active selling table and add it to the market. So we know this player sold orange, so they'll have to add an orange to the market. Uh, again, the color has to match one of the shares sold. So if this player sold, again in the example, blue or orange, they could make their choice of which one to pull off this table. If the ones they sold, there were none left, then they can decide which one to take off the table and add it to the market. At the end of a player's turn, when they took the sell action, you're going to see if a price adjustment was triggered by the selling table. If at any point we reach five briefcases, five color briefcases, that would trigger a price adjustment. So when five are left in the market of any color. So we could say maybe these were added to the market. We would trigger the price adjustment here since there's only five color briefcases left. Also in a five player game, you'll remember it takes an extra briefcase on the purchase ta tables. On the sales table, it takes an extra briefcase to be removed. So instead of getting down to five in a five player game, you would have to get down to four color briefcases to trigger a price adjustment. The next action is the buy silver action. On the player's turn, if they choose to buy silver, they can buy silver equal or up to the max on the level tile, and they're always going to pay the price on the silver price table. So we so you can see here at the start of the game, the price of silver is 20. So if this player wanted to buy silver on their turn, they would pay 20 to the bank and they would simply just take one silver bar and add it behind their screen. Whenever you buy silver, you do two things after acquiring the silver. 
First, you're going to adjust the buy track based on the number of bars you bought. So this player only bought one, so it would only go forward one. If the player bought three, it would have gone up by three. So it goes up based on the number purchased by the player. And also, you're always going to take one share from the market. It's the player's choice and add it to the silver purchase table. It doesn't matter how much silver you buy, it's just one share of the player's choice added to this table. And at the end of the player's turn, whenever they take the buy silver action, you're gonna check for a price adjustment. Just like the stock purchase table, if the silver purchase table gets its fifth briefcase, it's gonna trigger the price adjustment. It would take this extra spot or a sixth briefcase in a five player game. The final action a player can take is to pass. Whenever you pass, the player would select one briefcase of their choice from the market and add it to the silver purchase table. Again, at the end of the turn, you would still see if a price adjustment was triggered. And just like the stock purchase table, always keep in mind if the last of a briefcase is removed during a buy silver or a pass action, you're always going to adjust that stock one space to the right. Also, if the third of a color gets added to the silver purchase table, just like the stock purchase table, again, that stock price would slide one to the right. All right, so let's cover what happens during the price adjustment. So at the end of the player's turn, if a price adjustment was triggered, we're going to go through these steps before moving clockwise to the next player's turn. The first thing we always do at the start of a price adjustment, and this token is to remind us, all players must pay interest on their subsidies. They're gonna to have to pay $1 for each subsidy they have. So since this player has two subsidies, they'll have to take $2 and pay it to the bank. If players are unable to pay subsidies at this point, you'll just have to flip over the unpaid subsidies to remind the player that they owe that money. And then on their next turn, they have to immediately pay them off, taking additional subsidies, selling shares. After every player has paid their interest on subsidies, we're now going to draw briefcases out of the bag. And you're going to draw based on the number here on the level tile. So at the start of the game, if we triggered a price adjustment, we would draw five random briefcases out of the bag. After drawing the briefcases, we now immediately adjust the price of silver. The price of silver is going to be adjusted by the number of black briefcases drawn plus this number on the silver purchase track. So let's say in this last round, six silvers were purchased so we can see that it got it up to a plus two. So let's say in this example, instead of that yellow suitcase, you would never have a black at the first price adjustment, but let's say that was the draw. So we can see we have one black suitcase if we had three black suitcases it would be one two three plus two so the price of silver would go up five spots in this example we can see only one black suitcase plus two so the price of silver would go up three one two three whenever you adjust the price of silver this always resets back to zero during the price adjustment next you're going to adjust prices but before you do that Make note, if only one black briefcase was drawn, this is immediately going to get returned to the bag and it won't affect these prices. If two or more black briefcases were drawn, they're going to stay here and it's going to affect the price movement of these stocks. Whenever you do draw two or more black suitcases, the total number is going to adjust the draw value for each color. So we can say, let's say this was a different example where we drew seven briefcases out of the bag, two yellow, three red, two black, no blue, green, or orange. So since it's two or more, the black suitcases are going to adjust the values. So for blue, green, and orange that drew zero, they're now going to have a minus two, one negative for each of these. Yellow has positive two and negative two. So yellow is going to have zero in effect, and then red would only have one since they have three drawn but minus two. So you're always gonna deduct the number of black suitcases 
from the number drawn in each color. If we didn't have these black suitcases, we'll go back to our original example. We can see that the value for blue, green, and orange is zero. The value for yellow is two, and the value for red is three. Whatever the calculated value is, you're now gonna move each of those stock markers on the stock market based on their value. And so you can see here, if it was a value one, it would slide up one on the stock table. If it was a value zero, so in this example, blue, green, orange had a value of zero, so each of those markers would slide to the left one. So orange would go left, blue would go left, and green would go left. In this example, yellow has a value of two, so we can see two is up and over. So yellow would go like that. And then red, we saw drew three briefcases. That was their value. And so we can see that's a stock movement up by two. And it's important to remember, whenever you draw only one black suitcase, you saw that goes immediately back into the bag after we calculate the price of silver. When you draw two or more and it affects these prices, these do not go back into the bag. Just put them off to the side to create a supply. And after you adjust prices, you take the color shares drawn and now just add those briefcases back to the market. When you're adding the shares drawn back to the market, if any of the colors don't have any briefcases, their stock price immediately gets to move up one value. But that's only after briefcases have been added back after the price adjustment if all the briefcases of a particular color are missing. You're next going to check to see if we've triggered a higher level based on the price adjustments. So we can see by this stock price moving up to this band, you can see each of these color bands are associated with a level. This first one is the start level, then we have level one and level two. We can see this level two band is where this red price marker got to. So we're immediately going to move to level two. You can skip levels. So in this example, we skip level one completely, and now we're in level two. You can see the total number of subsidies has increased along with the number of shares you can buy or sell, the number of silver you can buy or sell, and the number of briefcases that are going to get drawn on the price adjustment. In addition, you're always going to add black briefcases to the market equivalent to whatever the current level is. So since we're on level two, these two would get added to the market. Uh, this one wouldn't get added until we got to level three and so on. So you could get all the way up to level nine and that's when the final briefcase would have gone added. Also keep in mind that these levels never regress. Uh, they only keep going up. So even if prices dip the entire market into a lower level, we would always stay at the current level until it got raised again. So in addition to possibly adding some black bags, black briefcases into the bag based on the level, we're not now also going to add the entire triggering table, those briefcases into the bag. So if it was the stock purchase table that triggered the price adjustment, it's now at this point that all five of these briefcases would get added to the bag. Likewise, if it was the silver purchase table that triggered the price adjustment, these briefcases would get added to the bag now. If it was the sales table that triggered the price adjustment by getting down to five shares, we would add these five shares plus this one briefcase to the bag. When we get to the second sales table, we would add the briefcases plus two black briefcases. And then when the third sales table triggers the price adjustment, you'd add your colored briefcases and then three of these black suitcases immediately to the bag. When the third sales table is the one to trigger the price adjustment, so let's say this was the example, we got down to five color shares, so this triggered the price adjustment, we go through all the steps, at the end of all the steps, we're not going to add the triggering table to the bag. So these five shares and then these three black briefcases. Whenever the third sales table triggers the adjustment, we're always going to just continue to refill the second sales table. So we're going to take 
shares from the market, add them here, and then any black briefcases that we've put off to the side as part of the supply. The game's gonna continue until at the end of a price adjustment, the price of silver reaches 100. When the price of silver reaches 100, that triggers the end game. At that point, all players can cash out all of their briefcases, all of their shares. They're gonna get money from the bank equal to the current stock value. They can also take the maximum number of subsidies allowed and get the money for those subsidies. And then with the money just earned from cashing out and getting the subsidies, they buy as much silver and gold as possible for the price. At that point, the player with the most silver and gold is declared the winner. If there's a tie, so for example, this player would have nine total because the gold is worth five silver. So four plus five is nine. If there's a tie for the highest gold silver, then you go to remaining money as the tiebreaker. And that should be everything you need to set up and play Black Friday.